In today's episode of Tony's Fords and Mustangs, we're going to cover a car that was a brave departure from the contemporary design of the day. Form followed function, and aerodynamics took the lead in the design of this car. And that introduction was essentially the death sentence for the square body cars that had preceded it. I bring you the 1983 through 1988 Ford Thunderbird. For the ninth generation of the Ford Thunderbird, Ford designers had something entirely new in mind. Sales of the boxy 1980 through 1982 Thunderbird were down considerably. The redesigned Thunderbird emphasized performance and handling over luxury and comfort. The ninth generation Thunderbird introduced a highly aerodynamic body to Ford vehicles for the first time. Ford reduced its drag coefficient from 0 0.50 to 0.35. To give the car a more contemporary image, the body was completely redesigned from the ground up. Aside from the grill and the Thunderbird emblem, both of which were updated, no styling cues were carried over. It did retain its Fox body platform chassis, but the new Thunderbird was designed for aerodynamic efficiency, with many of its body panels having rounded edges and its doors wrapping into the roof. This was an extreme contrast to the cars of the late 70s and early 80s. Additionally, the use of chrome was minimized. The car was launched on February 17, 1982. This car set a trend followed not only by Ford, but every American auto manufacturer. The Ford Mustang, Ford Tempo, the Ford Taurus, almost all of Ford's vehicles from that point forward were designed to be more aerodynamic. General Motors, Chrysler followed suit shortly thereafter, and all cars became less boxy from that point forward. In 1982, if you saw a Ford Thunderbird for the first time, you took a close look because it looked nothing like the American cars you had seen before. The 1983 Thunderbird was available as a base, heritage, or turbo coupe. Both the base and the heritage came standard with a 3.8 liter SX V6, was rated at 110 horsepower, and it was mated to a 3 speed automatic transmission. A 5 liter 302 cubic inch Windsor V8 with 140 horsepower was optional. The Turbo Coupe was the performance model. It featured a port fuel injected turbocharged 2.3 liter four cylinder engine, which produced 145 horsepower and 180 foot pounds of torque. It featured Ford's Eek four electric engine control system. Unlike other models, the Turbo Coupe came with a standard five-speed transmission, a limited slip traction lock differential, larger tires and wheels, and a sportier interior complete with analog gauges. The 1983 Turbo Coupe clocked a 0 to 60 time of 8.8 .8 seconds and ran the quarter mile in 16.7 seconds. Now this sounds slow by today's standards, but that was very quick compared to other cars of 1983. A total of 121,000 Thunderbirds were produced in 1983, 10% of those being Turbo Coupes. The 1984 Thunderbird saw a few changes. The Turbo Coupe gained a 3-speed automatic transmission as an option. A Fila model was introduced, which featured two-tone white and gray paint with red and blue pinstriping, white leather interior, and white wheel choices, as well as Fila logo badges. The mid-range Heritage model was renamed Elan. A total of 170,000 1984 Thunderbirds were sold. In 1985, the Thunderbird celebrated its 30th anniversary, so a 30th anniversary edition model was offered. That featured unique blue paint and stripes, and it came loaded with all the options. It was loosely based on the Elan trim, and most examples were equipped with a 5-liter V8. All Thunderbirds received an updated interior with a redesigned instrument panel. The grille and tail lamps were also revised. The Turbo Coupe saw engine output increase to 155 horsepower. A total of 151,000 T-Birds were delivered. The 1986 saw a few changes. There was the addition of the center high mount stop lamp and the Fila edition was discontinued. Sales increased slightly with 165,000 Thunderbirds sold. 
The 1987 Thunderbird received an extensive exterior revision to further improve its aerodynamic performance. The headlights were changed from sealed beam units to flush mounted composite units, and the rear quarter glass was also flush mounted. Thunderbird turbo coupes were distinguished by their own front bodywork, which deleted the traditional front grille. It also featured functional hood scoops. The only chrome on the entire car was the Thunderbird emblems and lettering. Turbo coupes gained an intercooler, essentially giving the car the powertrain of the Mustang SVO. The two 2.3 liter turbo has a nodular crank, forged pistons, and rods. Models with the 5 speed manual saw a power increase to 190 horsepower, allowing the car to attain a top speed of 143 miles per hour. Models with the 4 speed automatic transmission were detuned to 150 horsepower in the interest of transmission durability. This was done by limiting the turbocharger's boost. It was reduced to 9.5 psi instead of the 10 to 15 psi found on the manual cars. Turbo coupes were equipped with anti lock brakes on all four wheels. New for the T-Bird was automatic ride control. This was an electronically adjustable suspension dampening system. It used a central computer and a network of sensors and could automatically switch the dampers from normal to firm in just 40 milliseconds. The driver could also manually select firm mode with a switch. The turbo coupe also featured performance styled front volants with fog lamps, snowflake 16 inch alloy wheels with 16 inch P225 60 VR Goodyear Gatorback unidirectional tires. Car and Driver Magazine tested a 190 horsepower 5-speed manual transmission equipped 1987 Thunderbird Turbo Coupe and obtained a 0 to 60 time of 8 seconds flat and a quarter mile time of 16 seconds flat. The Turbo Coupe was named the Motor Trend Car of the Year for 1987. There were a total of 147,000 Thunderbirds sold in 1987. with a beauty, an inner strength, a force that sets it apart. Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. Run with it. 1988 was the final year for the Fox Body Thunderbird. The Turbo Coupe saw only minor changes. The 5-speed manual transmission was now allowed the full 15 PSI of turbo boost in all forward gears, as opposed to excluding the first two gears as it had done the year prior. The model lineup was further changed to bring the Thunderbird in line with Ford's other models. The Elan trim was dropped and was replaced with the LX and Sport versions. The LX was equipped with the V6, while the Sport version was equipped with the 302 V8. 147,000 Thunderbirds were sold in 1988. The 1987-88 models account for nearly half of the 130,700 turbo coupes ever made. Now we can't talk about these cars without talking about their success in the NASCAR series. Dubbed the Aero Bird by drivers, it was considered an aerodynamic innovation. Buddy Baker scored the first victory in the new Thunderbird, winning at Daytona on July 4th, 1983. A young driver named Bill Elliott would win his first NASCAR Winston Cup race later that year. He won three more in 1984 and 11 all on super speedways to set a record in 1985. Elliott won the points championship in a 1988 Thunderbird, making him the first Ford driver to do so since David Pearson in 1969. The 1983 through 88 body T-Birds often exceeded 200 miles per hour on the super speedways. Bill Elliott, in one qualifying session, set a record of the fastest lap in stock car history. His lap time of 44.998 seconds at an average speed of 212 miles per hour at Talladega Super Speedway is a record that still stands today. Today. The ninth generation was replaced by the 10th generation. That's the MN12 platform, but that's a story for another day. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. That's always appreciated. Also, if you like Fords, maybe check out this video over here. That's going to give you the complete history of the Ford Torino. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.